Summer Fashion goes Technicolor as we revisit our favorite stories of summer. Dress to impress today on The Express. On today's show, we get a call, we go out, we try to save as many lives as we can. Our top summer stories. Who could forget this one? Then embracing the jiggle just in time for the beach. Embrace the jiggle, fully embody the jiggle. And as the saying goes, rugby is a hooligans game played by gentlemen. It just attracts a, a good cross section of the Whistler community. Um, most people turn up here on their mountain bikes. It's touch and go and this express gets whipped into shape yeah. just in time for summer. Welcome to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. Summer fashion, what's hot and not? We're rummaging through the peak performance closet to find your answer. But first, burning calories, relieving stress, and working up a sweat. That's what all women do to keep in shape. But what if fitness could be fun? Maybe even something worth dancing about. Grounding, so bringing our feet hip distance apart. And at this point, you're welcome to close your eyes and just become aware of your inner landscape. Tailbone is long to the ground. Massage therapist Magdalena Regdos begins her class with the grounding mudra meditation practice. Notice that the knees are relaxed and the hips are in neutral. This is a time for students to center in their bodies, to become aware of any built up emotion, allowing themselves to free pent up energy and embrace their femininity. Briefly set your intention for the next hour. Gathering chi here. Beautiful. But beyond feminine oh, empowerment be and becoming Basic one with the universe, yeah, as the name goal. suggests, this belly fit class also embraces the tummy. Energized. And ultimately, the bikini season. There is a lot of shaking. One thing that I like to just invite all of the participants to do right from the start is to embrace the jiggle. Beautiful, keep it going. Fully embody the jiggle and, and it goes from there. Embodying the jiggle with hopes of jiggling a little less in the future is one part of the class. A Paddy Dive Master, Snowboard Instructor, Go-Go Dancer and Belly Fit Instructor, this goddess shape doesn't come from sitting around. I always find that when I think about, you know, getting a gym membership or um, doing something where it's all about counting or grinning and bearing through it, I, that doesn't draw me as much as how can I have a lot of fun today and how can I sweat at the same time. Keeping the fingertips nice and wide. The footwork component of the class segued to cardio. Caught up in the joy of dance, it was easy to forget you were burning calories. Even the names of the movements put a smile on students' faces. We're going to play around with the grapevine, which we can actually thank Jane Fonda for that many, many years ago. <laughs> Unwind. Perhaps some shimmy as well. Um, hip drops, right bongra here. bounce, African shimmy. The belly fit practice founded on Vancouver Island five years ago draws on multiple cultural dance styles, including Bollywood, Bangra and African dance. Prepare for core on the floor. There's lots of mats here actually. The one hour class wrapped up with Pilates and yoga as well. Each exercise targeting the fine core muscles. As a massage therapist, Magdalena knows the benefits that arise from this. I find this is a really good class to um, help with people with um, back issues or hips or just different areas. It's, it's, it could also be used for rehabilitation. I feel really um, confident recommending it to clients as well through massage therapy. When you tilt, everything comes back to the belly in this class, whether shaking it or breathing into it, leading to transformation in spirit, mind, and hopefully bikini. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Get your jiggle on every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. at Fruve and also on Sundays at 7 p.m. at Loka Yoga. 
Well, in the spirit of summer fashion, I'm wearing my top pick. These golf pants are not only colorful, but they're waterproof and breathable as well. Fashionable and functional, an unbeatable combination, as is this combination of Brits, Irish, Kiwis and Aussies. What brings over five nations and 160 people to the playing fields each week? Welcome to Whistler's Touch Rugby Let's League. Come back, come back. Wait, wait. Australia, Britain, Britain. Canada, South Africa, New Zealand. Play, 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 play. I'm from Glasgow in Scotland and I got into rugby because it's in Glasgow it's either soccer or rugby and rugby was more suited to me, so I grew up playing rugby from the age of about six. I've got white, I've got white, Dwayne, I've got white. The game of rugby is more of a tradition than a sport, with a history and camaraderie that's hard to beat. Unlike conventional rugby, in touch, you're attempting to avoid the contact, and that's what makes it a fast-paced sport that anyone can get into. Pick it up, guys, guys, run. Touch rugby is awesome, like, touch rugby is fast, it's fun, you know, everyone's in there right. playing, it's good, good fun pace. Um, over the last three years that we've been playing, it's definitely got a lot faster. People are now, we now know how to play the game and it's just more enjoyable. It takes a lot of organisation to bring this amount of people onto the field each Tuesday, but it's a passion for the game that keeps the league growing year after year. <laughs> just love running around a paddock chasing a ball. Um, I played rugby since I was eight years old all the way through school. Came over here to ski and uh, live in the mountains and uh, turns out they had a rugby field so we got a bunch of people again. You make the touch. George referees, plays and organises the league but it's not just rugby veterans that get involved. Anyone can play, um, you don't have to be a, um, a rugby player or have any experience. It just attracts a, a good cross section of the Whistler community. Um, most people turn up here on their mountain bikes so yeah it's, uh, it's not necessarily rugby players it's just, just people from around town. The saying goes that rugby is a hooligans game played by gentlemen, but this league also includes women. There must be at least two female players on the pitch at all times, and they are just as vocal as the guys. Come on guys, touch them! I feel stoked being out on the field and being with people from all over the world. There's Kiwis, Brits, Aussies, like it's all over. And I'm from Canada originally and I didn't learn how to play touch rugby, so it's, it's pretty epic to learn a new sport. <laughs> Any rugby up here is great. Like it's good fun. Everyone has laughs, and it's good uh, getting me a lot of good people. Straight, run hard. The Rugby World Cup is being played in September of this year in New Zealand, and I bet we'll find a few familiar faces watching the action around Whistler. This is D yes! Rappo touching down for Shaw TV. Touch rugby is fast-paced, exhausting, and not to mention addictive, as is shopping. Navigate the hangers of summer fashion. Our friends here at Peak Performance are going to help us out. Peak Performance is definitely going with uh, bright color, like we think about pink for women, uh, yellow, blue. And for the guys, we have raspberries, violet, really colorful and beautiful. Peak Performance has some very special friends. It's good to see you here in Whistler, Brit, and you look fantastic all ready for summer. I am, thank you. How has your summer been shaping up? It's been great. I've been playing lots of golf and trying to get out into the warm weather when we get it, and uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. I heard you've even been heading up the hill doing a bit of coaching. I have, I have. Get, gotta get that goggle tan back out there. <laughs> What's hot for golf right now, especially for women, it will be the dress and the skirt. We always combine nice uh, material, which is really technical, uh, waterproof, breathable, uh, stretching. So it's all combined with technical and fashion and super comfortable. Wow, this looks fantastic. How does it perform? Um, it's great, you know, out there on the golf course you want something that really moves with your swing and, and uh, also, you know, kind of keeps you dry out there and works with the hot temperatures as well and I find this here is just fantastic. And I think we definitely got the blue and pink favorites going on here, it looks great. Right now the men casual, uh, what will be popular is uh, the PK, uh, the polo shirt. We have a lot of uh, different bright color, again, orange and, uh, and blue. Czech is really popular this season for men, for sure. 
What's really in right now in the season will be the, the tunic for women. We have it in different color too, blue, baby, uh, pink, which is really nice too. So Britt is wearing one of our really comfy hoodie. I love the bright colors. Uh, what makes this a favorite for you? Well, I think the hoodies, I mean, the colors alone, I love having, I have all my hoodies and you can pick so many different colors. It really brightens up an outfit and they're just so soft and comfortable. To update your look this summer, uh, I will definitely go with the tunic. Uh, wearing that with a nice tight uh, pair of jeans or legging. And of course, the famous belt that just, you know, give a little uh, touch to all your outfit. Peak Performance is going to be moving to a new location, so look out for their storefront along the Village Stroll this summer. Stay tuned, we've got more local stories coming your way as we revisit our favourite summer stories. Still to come, relive the rush and heroics of the Squamish Coast Guard Auxiliary. Highly trained, highly skilled professionals, volunteer marine safety rescue team. And summer is on the move with the Whistler Museum newly turned 100 years old this year. It kind of encompasses the history of Whistler as a, as a whole. Uh, it went from really humble beginnings, this kind of backwoods valley full of loggers to now the, the largest ski resort in North America. You're watching Shaw TV. Welcome back to our styling summer here at Peak Performance in Whistler. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and you're watching The Express. Next, let's revisit the story about our Squamish Coast Guard Auxiliary. Every year, these men and women dedicate hundreds of hours to keeping both us and our waters safe. Be advised, Auxiliary 4 is away from the dock for a two hour exercise. Auxiliary 4, Vancouver Coast Guard Radio, Roger. 20 minutes. That's our time from the moment we get the page to, you know, running out, getting all your gear on, getting into the boat, doing our pre departure, and off to the call. Not a lot of time, but when lives are in danger, every second counts. Ready on the bow? Ready bow aye. It's this team of highly trained volunteers who are on hand to help. It's the Squamish Coast Guard Auxiliary, a service dedicated to keeping locals alive and safe while out on the water. We have radar and we have GPS. If we get a call, we go out. We try and save as many lives as we can. You got them on your port side. Roger, contact port side. They're highly trained, highly skilled professionals, volunteer marine safety rescue team that uh, offer this service to the community. And fortunately, not a real rescue today. Instead, the team are practicing vital marine search and rescue skills. Just basically man overboard drills, getting people off the shore, power buckling off the side of the boat. We do a lot of training with the fire pump. We don't actually fight fires, but just in case we come upon a boat that is burning, we use the pump to block our boat from the heat. There's lots of tows that we do. We got fully equipped with first aid kits. We have pretty much everything we need to, to do a rescue successfully. Starboard engine idle ahead. It could be anything from a medical emergency on the water to an overturned or grounded vessel. But whatever the rescue situation, this group of dedicated volunteers are on hand to assist 24 hours a day, every day of the year. And not only do they keep up their rescue training constantly, they're also helping to promote safe boating. Always, always bring PFDs for everybody on the boat. Don't drink and boat. It's just like don't drink and drive. Just, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Um, know all the, the hazards around. I think people don't think it will happen to them. That's, that's a misconception. They need to let someone know where they're going at all times. They need to always wear their life jacket. It doesn't work if you don't wear it. Toolkit, tarps, good. Make sure you have the essential gear, have all that safety equipment before you head out. Simple boating safety tips that could prevent you from ever having to meet these guys. On the water in Squamish, I'm Alana Ponsonby for The Express. New members are always needed, no experience necessary. Training takes place twice a week on the weekends. 
Well, we've got our own Stacy and Clinton here at Peak Performance. What not to wear? Just ask the staff. Now, if you want to learn more about Whistler history, you definitely want to be hooking up with the Whistler Museum walking tour. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm Jessica. Hey, Jeff. Awesome. You're here for the walking tours? I am. It's a neat way to explore the local history. You can walk around and see the village and it takes our, the history outside of the museum and into the actual settings where a lot of the stories we're talking about were made. If we're ready to go, then we can go and explore Whistler's history through the streets. Every day at 1 p.m., the Valley of Dreams tour leaves from the Whistler Visitor Center. From Olympic dreams to miners seeking out copper, people have been drawn to the Valley of Whistler for over a hundred years. The Whistler Museum Summer Walking Tours uncover the history that has made Whistler what it is today. It kind of encompasses the history of Whistler as a, as a whole. Uh, it went from really humble beginnings, this kind of backwoods valley full of loggers to now the, the largest ski resort in North America and uh, took a lot of vision, a lot of different dreamers kind of left their imprint on the valley. So here we are in Skiers Plaza, the base of Blackcomb and Whistler Mountains. Stopping at the base of Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains, it's hard to imagine the landscape without the lift access and a busy bike park. A lot has changed in the last 30 years. The original plan was to have lifts all over Whistler Mountain, so on the creek side as well as on the north base, but they couldn't do that because there was actual mining. miners still had claims on the north slopes of Whistler Mountain. So here we are at Fitzsimmons Creek. Evidence of those mining claims can still be found, and maybe even the remnants of a cabin. And there is actually a trail going all the way up the Fitzsimmons Creek Valley, which is following what is today the Singing Pass Trail. Um, there was a trapper that had a cabin up near, near Singing Pass, and there were local miners that even hoped to find uh, the tail end of the Britannia Mines copper. So we're going to head back to the village now. Post mining claims and pre development of what is now the village, a garbage dump occupied the very pathways that our town follows, and it comes with stories of its own. So, when this was still the dump, a popular activity was uh, on Sunday nights, people would grab a case of beer and come here after dinner because everyone would jump their garbage off, and this would be teeming with bears, and it was the best spot to find bears in the valley. They'd just be walking around having their Sunday night snacks. This plaza is where they had the awards ceremonies for the Olympics in 2010. The stories of Whistler include visionaries and fun seekers, all making the town what it is today, a world-class resort that has made its Olympic dreams a reality. The community now is at a really interesting point because after all these decades, we finally succeeded in hosting the Olympics, and now we're kind of left wondering what's next, where do we go from here? And so it's, a, it's an interesting and exciting time for Whistler. All right, so that, that's it for the tour today, guys. Thanks a lot for coming out. Only history will tell the next chapter of Whistler's story. From Whistler Village, I'm Jessica Turner for Shaw TV. It's probably a perfect time to head into the museum now and to check out some of the exhibits. Happy belated birthday to the Whistler Museum. This cornerstone of the community just turned 100 years old. But why walk when you can roll? After the break, our Best of Summer Story Show continues. Watch out, these tutus mean business. I go to a lot of hockey games and like every once in a while, yeah, roller derby, it's every two minutes. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Artina's Handcrafted Canadian Jewelry, 387 Water Street in Gastown and Government Street in Victoria. Welcome back to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. Summer fashion is at its peak performance here in Whistler. Who says sporty can't be styling? Well, it's that time in the show again to head out of town. Get ready to settle in for a new road trip this week. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip is brought to you by Quality Assured Collision Services and our network of 18 auto body shops across BC. The site you see behind me is the only place in this country, and I mean Canada, that you can dig your own fossils. And yes, you heard right, dig your own fossils. Today, we're at the Maccabee Fossil Beds, west of Kamloops. Getting to the fossil beds is easy. A 40-minute drive west of Kamloops in the Trans-Canada Highway, or just 10 minutes east of Cache Creek. 
After a short drive through the sagebrush, you then take an easy uphill hike to the beds themselves, which were established by Dave Langevin, who was the original claim holder on the site. And it was always his dream that he was going to find a fossil claim that he could open up and share with people, and share with children. Once you're all set up and ready to go, John shows you exactly where to look for your fossils. What we are looking for are sm flat, smooth plates like this, and they have these delicate, delicate lines. Mm. Those are the diatomaceous mat layers. That's where the fossils are hiding. So, armed with that knowledge, I happily chipped away at small rocks for the next half hour, eventually finding about two dozen fossils I was able to take home. These fossils have been dated to about 50 million years ago when this location was a semi-tropical freshwater lake. So if you want to find out more about coming out to the Maccabee fossil beds, they're online, dll-fossils.com. So near Savannah, for the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip, I'm Kirk Fraser. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip has been brought to you by Quality Assured Collision Services and our network of 18 auto body shops across BC. A little closer to home, we're exploring summer fashion while at the same time revisiting some of our favorite stories from the summer. Stay tuned, we've got our top pick coming up. Later on in the show, revisit the top of Mount Curry. You can see why they call this golf course Big Sky. There is no shortage of sporting activities to participate in the summer. The biggest problem is just trying to find the time to do it all. A new sport is rolling out in Squamish, roller derby. It's the beauty and the beast of the wheeling world. Dressed to impress, Squamish's home team, the Sea to Sky Sirens, are getting ready for their first roller derby bout against the Harbour City Rollers from Nanaimo. This is not a game for softies. Bring on the drama of this year's hottest sport. I don't think of it as violent, um, and I think that to the spectators it looks worse than it is. You know, anytime anyone takes a fall, we've we've got protective gear on. A lot of the times you'll you'll hit someone and knock them down, and they'll get back up and they'll be like, "That was an awesome hit. That was really cool." You know, or like teach that to me. This is a form of healthy aggression that people will pay to see. The sirens hope to simply pay off the cost of the event but the lines outside suggest they might be in more than they hoped, and they certainly have the right MC to get the crowds going. I uh, met a couple roller girls, and they told me about roller derby starting in Squamish. I was like, what? Roller derby in Squamish? This is awesome. And they're like, yeah, Richie, roller skate? I said, no. There are many volunteers that help to put an event like this together, but none are more dedicated than the referees. It is a lot of fun. Uh, it's the skating. Now, it does have the the official aspect of it. So you do have, you are somewhat accountable for your behavior and your knowledge of the rules and whatnot. And you're not always appreciated, somewhat rarely appreciated vocally, but they can't do what they do without the refs. But it's not all about the hard hits. It's about making new friends and trying new things. This sport seems to have brought together a group of fierce women, but also a community. I just thought, I really want to do this. I have never skated, I've never skied, I've never been on a soccer team, and I just wanted to do something and accomplish something, and I couldn't even roller skate, and five months later, I'm skating like a fiend. I enjoy roller derby, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, like, I go to a lot of hockey games, and like, every once in a while, yeah! Roller derby, it's every two minutes. I'm here with Jamie, and uh, he has a very important role to play tonight. He's actually a roller husband, so Jamie, what does that entail? Well, there's lots of things that happen. There's many, many practices where she comes home and she's tired, sore, and beat up. It definitely requires a lot of support, lots of massages, and lots of hugs. The first bout of the season has certainly been a success for the Sea to Sky Sirens, with the crowds as pumped as the players. Rolling in Squamish for Shaw TV, this is D. Raffo. Those girls mean business. New members are always welcome. Our top fashion tip here at Peak Performance for the summer is to wear bright colors and don't be afraid to switch things up. Now our top story pick, get out and enjoy Big Sky. Big Summer is brought to you by Caltus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. 
No houses, no development. Golfers peacefully putter around the serenity of Big Sky Golf Course in Pemberton. Scenes of uninterrupted mountain views overlook the course, rated four and a half stars by Golf Digest, and among the top 36 courses in Canada by Rolex Ratings. But this Mona Lisa of the golf world plays outside the classic stuffy box, taking the sport of golf to edgier heights. The 19th hole is usually known as the bar, so after the guys finish the 18th, they quickly head into the 19th and grab themselves a beer. This is a little bit of a different 19th hole. You don't have much service up here. Black home aviation, along with golf pro Michael McNeil, take us on Big Sky's 19th hole tour, situated along the ridge of mighty Mount Curry. We got up and we got to see all these crazy peaks and uh, the peak of the mountain and stuff like that. It was. Uh, just kind of breathtaking, taking it all in. We arrived at 8,000 feet, ready to take a swing at the longest drive of our life. So what green are you aiming for down here? Uh, this one right down here on the left. That is the golf course down that there, That is correct? the course, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe from up here. Sky's the limit at this quirky course, where guests are greeted at the entranceway by a unique cast of characters. There's a bunch of uh, sculptures all the way through, everything from lawnmowers to skis are being used to create all the sculptures that you see here. This creative approach applies to the environmentally friendly design of the course as well. Situated on a floodplain, a berm fences in the entire location. We're able to almost create like a mini environment here. We have lakes that we've over the years that have become full of fish. We have every type of bird you can think of. Last three years we had river otters starting to come onto the site. Mount Curry is at the center of it all, even in the kitchen under the imagination of executive chef Ryan Leach. One of our signature dishes right now is our brand new wet, uh, Mount Curry Sunday. It has an actual chocolate wedge that looks exactly like Mount Curry in the background. There you go. From icing sugar to snow, we teed off on the real deal. So what kind of balls are we using today? Uh, these are biodegradable, environment-friendly golf balls. So we'll let them down there and they won't stay for too long. They will just kind of uh, dissolve into nothing. Yeah, just take it, take it back nice and slow. Give it a knock. Give it a good knock. And you'll grab me if I uh, I'll, uh, I'll take care of you if you go, absolutely. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> The views stretch all the way down Pemberton Meadows. The next stop, Bella Coola. So even if you're a beginner golfer like me, with views like this, you know you're gonna always score a hole in one on this trip. It's incredible up here, it's pretty crazy. Just looking out over the golf course so high up, actually watching the ball just soar through the air, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Pretty armsy swing up here because it's uh, kind of on pins and needles. I can definitely feel the height, yeah. Yeah, I can't take the smile off my face here. <laughs> that was way too much fun. Smiles abounded. Exactly what this big sky aims to do. Bringing the joy of golf to every game, both in the air and on the ground. From Pemberton, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Big Summer. Big Summer is brought to you by Caltus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. Summer or winter, the biggest fashion tip you need to know is to make your style your own and make sure it's always ready for the sea to sky crazy weather. And that wraps up this week's show. If you'd like to see your story AD on the Express, drop us a line at sea to sky express at shaw.ca. You can also get our show online at shawtv.com. Join us next week. We're heading up to Whistler Mountain Bike Park. So until then, from all of us on the Express, thanks for watching. Nicole Fitzgerald's wardrobe by Peak Performance. Hair styling by The Loft Salon and makeup by Beauty Mart. POV camera courtesy of Contour. 
while filming on the mountain parking provided by Fire Rock Lounge.